Welcome back everyone to another G.I. Joe review. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Retaliation line. This is a 118 scale Joe Colton. This figure was released in 2012 as part of the G.I. Joe Retaliation movie line. This is the packaging that they come in. Joe Colton is played by Bruce Willis. This figure actually does resemble Bruce Willis a good bit. So on the top of the packaging we have Roblox and Snake Eyes, the G.I. Joe Retaliation logo across the top. And the rest of the packaging is pretty much the bubble showing the features of the figure. We have the figure, some of its accessories are shown. Um, Joe comes with a pull ripcord and unleashed four missiles. Joe Colton nameplate, we have the Arashi Kage logo there. Which is kind of ridiculous because they just thrown that Arashi Kage symbol around, you know, have no respect for, you know, what it is. Um, and that's Snake Eyes is Ninja Clan and Storm Shot is Ninja Clan. And I just think they overdone it too much in this line. So these are recommended for ages 4 and up. We have the Hasbro logo, but there are choking hazards, small parts. These are not for children on the age of 3. On the side of packaging, we do have this uh, product information. G.I. Joe is the world's greatest special arts fighting force with top secret ninja training from the toughest masters. Led by Ultimate Ninja Commander Roblox, which I hate that. These elite heroes defend the globe from the evil forces of Cobra. Really. Led by the Ultimate Ninja Commander Roblox. Roblox is not a ninja. That irritates me. I don't know why. Here we have a bio for Joe Cohen. Um, Joe Cohen is the original G.I. Joe hero. He returns to action in the nick of time as the G.I. Joe team fights off evil Cobra forces. Incredibly brave and strong, Joe Colton blosses the enemy with his own mighty arsenal, including a rapid-fire four-barrel missile launcher. Yeah, there's been a few uh, variations for Joe Colton out there throughout the uh, G.I. Joe history of figures. Um, so, to have Bruce Willis play Joe Colton, that's actually a pretty cool idea. I did I did like that. Uh, but the, the, the whole ninja thing... That should be something special that's held for the Ninja Clan and their associates, not just throwing that around on every G.I. Joe. Um, there's a Ninja Force, and there's the Rosh Kage, and that's it. Not making every military soldier a Ninja Commando, which is just silly. On the back of the packaging, it shows some of the uh, product shots of Joe Colton. Here we have some of the accessories. He has a shotgun, a couple of pistols. And uh, if you watch my other G.I. Joe videos, you are probably familiar with me commenting about how I do not like the spring action or, or loaded rocket launchers just because of the sh sheer size of them and the lack of realism. And this is going to be a great example for that argument because it does show it here. This thing is massive. If this thing was real, there's no way a human being could hold it. But we'll take a look at that here when we open up the figure. The package does have a very nice unique design. It's kind of square here and it kind of starts going inward and around on this side. The bottom of the packaging. Here's a UPC if that helps you at all. And some product information there. Company information if you're interested. So let's go ahead and get this guy out of the packaging. Okay, here we have Joe Colton freed from the packaging. So let's go ahead and take a look at him. Let's start with that head sculpt. I think he looks pretty good for a representation of uh, Bruce Willis. The eyes are kind of creepy. He does have his brown eyebrows. He is bald. He has a shadow for a beard. Which is done really well. But he really represents Bruce Willis pretty good for an action figure. 
It's just his eyes are kind of weird. He has a shoulder harness here, which has a pistol attached to. Uh, the pistol is not removable. Then sculpted to his white shirt, he has these uh, auto drab suspenders. He has a blue belt buckle, a brown belt, and he has green auto drive pants with black camo throughout. On his wrist, which is really cool, is he has a red, white, and blue watch. You can see that. Let's see if I can zoom out. So that's a really nice touch for because he is probably the ultimate patriot. We have the black band on his other wrist. And then he has his black boots. That's good. For the articulation, his head does look down just a bit, not much. Tucks up. We have a bit of a tilt to the side, not too much to that side. More of that side. That's weird. The head rotates 360 all the way around. Pretty good. Uh, his arms are on a ball joint. They rotate 360 all the way around. And they raise up that much. On this side. And they will raise over his head. But he gets captured by Cobra. His elbows do swivel 360, and he does have bendable elbows on both sides. Okay, I'll give it to him. It's 90 degrees. This one, uh, a little shy. For the wrist on this arm, we have a rotation of 360, and this one has the in and out of the uh, wrist. Then he has a gripping hand here for his weapons. Also 360 on this hand. And then we have the down and up like this. Which is quite stiff and not going to cooperate. There we go. For his pistols. So we'll leave it down so we can look at his accessories. He does have chest articulation here. We have a bit of a crunch. Back, forward. Side to side motion. He does sit like a champ. I love when they sit. Um, he has double jointed knees, so we have one being one bend there, giving us ninety. That would be the bottom bottom joint, and then if we can get the top one to work out for us, there he has one you're ever going to want. To make a realistic poses. Very nicely. He has pivot uh, ankles to pivot down. They're not going to pivot up too much because of his pants. And they rotate 360 all the way around. So he looks uh, pretty good. So overall, let's just take a 360 look at a... Uh, Joe Colton here. That's great. So let's look at some of his accessories. We'll start with the good ones. Comes with a black shotgun. Looks like he has a tactical light on there. Not too bad. It's a black plastic. Decently sculpted. He has a small pistol. Very small, hard to hold on to. I really wish he had a couple maybe uh, pistol holsters for to put these pistols in. And then he comes with a revolver. Black revolver. Very cool. 
Okay, so let's get to the whole evidence, we're going to call it evidence, of what I uh, do not like about this G.I. Joe's. Those spring-loaded launchers. Don't get me wrong, there's a couple of them out there that are okay. But this one's, <laughs> this one's probably one of the worst. And uh, I mean, overall, cannon-wise, if you're going to customize this to like a cannon or something, you can. So, and put like a stand on it. But other than that, it's pretty far-fetched. As you can see that this piece comes off and you could use that for a gun. It's just uh, orange. Um, you can paint it, but if you don't want to modify your Joes and you care about you know being, them being complete unmodified, it's not an option. Then we have this thing, just is huge compared to the figure. I mean, there's literally no way a human being you can sell that like. That's something you see on a, an attack vehicle and not on a human being. So we just reattach this back on. Just simply put it like that. You get four of these blue missiles. And then they go spring loaded into a uh, each one of the holes. So don't get me wrong, I am not bashing this figure. This figure, I, I do love G.I. Joe's. It's my opinion. I do not like the uh, these this launcher are mostly uh, spring loaded. So uh, if you guys uh, feel the same way, or if you feel that you do like it, there's no right or wrong. So comment down below. Let me know. You know if you guys enjoy them. If you don't enjoy them, it's okay. It's just your preference. There's no right or wrong. It's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just either for you or not for you. The last thing it comes with is this very large rip stick. This thing is quite long. So here's our Bruce Willis figure. And here is the uh, rip stick. And basically what you do with this is you... Let's see what side it goes in. So you stick it through here. All the way through. And then when you pull on it, this barrel will rotate and the missiles will fire one at a time. So uh, let's give it a try without trying to get too crazy here. I am definitely having a hard time doing this with a camera. That's pretty much the demonstration. Wow. Yeah, that's just not, uh, not for me. One of the really cool ones was when I was a, back in the 80s, they had something called a battle wagon. It was a motorized launcher. It had a ton of missiles. And you just push a button and it went, it turned, you heard it go, and then it just fired the missiles off. But that was pretty cool. I do like that one. But uh, this one's not, uh, not for me. Let's try to get him to hold this and I'll show you what I mean.